The next song I'm going to do, uh, I dedicate to uh, the maker of the flute uh, over 200 years ago. And uh, I do this song in memory of him. So this flute basically laid in storage for over a hundred years. Uh, it's uh, some of the history behind it that we have collected. Uh, the beadwork on the front on the front of the flute are their old uh, what, what they refer to as trade beads, and they were brought over, started bringing these over in the late 1700s. Uh, they're all irregular. They're not all the same size. They're they're just uh, they're all they're handmade beads. And uh, it's sewn on a piece of uh, brain tan leather, of course. They didn't have our modern ways of tanning. And it's sewn on with uh, sinew. And that's why, after all of these years, the beads are still on there. They're still, still intact. It's not sewn on with thread. The beadwork is done in such a way, I don't know if you can see, make out the, uh, the beadwork. Uh, this represents mountains from what I understand, not teepees like a lot of people think. This actually represents mountains. And the red represents lightning on the mountain top. I've been told that this was uh, definitely a, a Lakota style beadwork on here and Lakota style uh, the way that the flute is made. The, the beadwork dates it back possibly uh, right around the 200 year old mark. So this is not uh, this is a very old flute. These leather thongs here at one time had uh, feathers, and the feathers have been long gone. Uh, this uh, were fe feathers of a red bird, and, uh, and the feathers themselves are long gone. The front of the flute, of course, has a bird's head carved on the front of it, and I'm not sure what the eyes were made out of. Uh, the head of the flute looks like at one time it may have been painted black and I understand that that was a common practice back in those days. The block on the flute has the long ears uh, to make it adaptable to playing in the wind and uh, but I'm going to show the full length of the flute now and then I'm going to switch sides to see the other side and here is the top of the flute but there were no electric tools used on this flute and none of the uh, technology that we have today this is tuned the old way uh, and this is the bottom of the flute and this is looking down the bird's mouth, the throat of the flute. And this is looking down the playing end. When the flute was packed away, it basically ceased to age. And as you can tell, it was very old when it was packed away over a hundred years ago. It was played so much by the maker that if you notice where his mouth was, it is actually much, much lighter than the rest of the flute, all the way around. This flute was played a lot. Evidently, it was re repaired at one time. It was broken at one time and had been repaired. There are two smudges on here, one here on the bottom 
and another one here on the side. And I've been told, I don't know this for a fact, this is totally just a conjecture, I guess would be the word, uh, that they had uh, ceremonies way, way back when, where uh, when they would, they would bless something, they would use the blood of a buffalo or the blood of a deer. And uh, we're wondering if these were not marks, which have later turned black, of course, with age, as blood does. Uh, the way it was made, they would, from this hole here, then they would put the first playing hole. And that's from the, um, the sound area right here. And then they would use the flute, uh, the thumb, to measure the next hole and next hole right on down the line. And then they would use the body part, the actual end of the flute right here uh, would be the length of the arm and that would be where it would actually be cut off. But since the bird, of course, has the mouth open, the flute is longer than that, but the actual flute is only the length to the, where the opening of the bird's mouth is. The flute was split, of course, two pieces, hollowed out and then put back together, and they used pine tar and pitch back in those days to seal this together. If you look down the flute, of course it follows the grain. Uh, the split. It is not straight. It is curved. If you look at the flute itself, there's a slight bow to it. So this was made from we uh, uh, just a, a limb. I started playing this flute about eight years ago, six or eight years ago, and uh, totally connected with it. Uh, the very first time I ever played it, I went to bed that night and had a vision uh, of the maker of this flute. And I could see him off on a, uh, a distance, off on a, just a little bit of a knoll, grassy knoll type thing. And uh, he had on uh, buckskin leggings, he had a breech clout, he had moccasins, and he had a long sleeve white man shirt, sort of a rust colored shirt. And he was playing the flute, and I couldn't hear the music, but I could feel the music in my heart. And uh, I've really connected with this flute. And I feel I've really connected with the spirit of the Maker also. And uh, I'm carrying on the music that he started so long ago.